let's look at domains and try to find domains of some various functions. So let's imagine we have some function f of x equals x squared minus 7x. The domain is not explicitly given, but it's up for us to understand what its domain is. Now with this one, we're looking for are there any restrictions? Are there any values of x that make this function undefined? Well, in this one, there's really nothing going on. Any value I choose in the set of real numbers, this function will work. There's no division by zero. Uh, there's no uh, square roots of negative numbers or anything that's happening along those lines. So the domain for this one is a set of all real numbers. And sometimes you're going to see this R with a second line on the stem as a, as a donate or a, as a notation for it, a set of all real numbers. Or you can also see it in interval notation. All numbers from negative infinity to positive infinity. That also illustrates what are what is my domain. All right, let's look at another one. Let's look at a g of x. equals 3x plus 2 divided by x squared minus 2x minus a 3. Now I hope your spidey senses jumped right off the, off, the, off the floor that time and realized I have a division, I have a fraction going on and I know that dividing by 0 is something that I cannot do within a function so therefore I have to exclude that. So how do we find out what are the values that make the denominator equal to zero? Well, let's set the denominator equal to zero and solve. We might have to use a quadratic equation sometimes. This one might factor cleanly. Factors to negative three and plus one. So for this to be true, x could equal negative one or x equals three. So there's two numbers that I must exclude from my domain. And I could write that, uh, so my domain, if I were asked to write my domain, I could write my domain as the union of uh, negative infinity to negative one. I have to exclude one. I have the numbers between negative one and three. I have to exclude three with a union of three to positive infinity. So I have those three areas, which constitutes the entire time or number line, my set of all real numbers, except for the values of negative one and three. All right, let's look at another one. Let's look at an h of x. And this one's going to equal square root of 3x plus 12. So what do you notice? Obviously, you notice we have a root involved. And not only do we have a root involved, it's an even index root, like the square root, the fourth root, or the sixth root. The even roots, we have to be careful that we do not have a negative underneath of that. So how do we determine this? Well, this value, or the, the terms inside, have to be greater than zero, or equal to zero. So what happens then? So 3x plus 12, that whole thing has to be greater than or equal to zero. We can solve this. Divide both sides by a three. So I get x is greater than or equal to negative four. So all values that are greater than or equal to negative four will make sure that this function is defined. Any values less than negative four, this function will not be defined. So I can um, display the answer as all x such that x is greater than or equal to negative 4 in set builder notation. Or I can also do interval notation, which tells me I have negative 4 is a solution all the way to positive infinity. So if I choose any number within that range, this function is defined. We have one last one. Uh, let's have an f of x. Oh, let's call this one a j of x. j of x equals 3x plus 2 all over a square root of 14 minus 2x.
I have two issues going on here that I hope that you're able to observe. Both I have a rational expression, and in the denominator, I have an even index root. So I have to make sure my index root has a positive number in it, but I also have to make sure that it does not equal zero. So 14 minus 2x, similar to this idea, 14 minus 2x, have to make sure that's greater than or equal to zero. Now notice I said greater than or equal to zero for the root to be positive, but there was something else going on. I have to make sure that also does not equal zero. So I remove the greater than or equal to zero and it's just greater than zero. Let's solve this problem down. So negative two X is greater than negative 14. Divide both sides by a negative two. So I have X and I'll have a seven. Do you remember what we do to the sign? When we multiply or divide by a negative number, we flip the sign around. So this value or my domain for my J of X function are all values less than seven. So in set builder notation, all X such that X is less than seven, or I can put it in interval notation, negative infinity to seven, soft bracket on seven because seven itself will make that function. Although I can do the root, it'll make the denominator zero, which also must be excluded.